Hey friends, have you been looking for some more quick and easy ground beef recipes? Well, I have got four amazing recipes for you this week. Quick, easy, simple, and so good. Your family will absolutely love them. They taste amazing. Trust me, I know I've made them. They are awesome. <laughs> and if this is your first time joining in, my name's Susan, and welcome to the fun. Each week, you know I go through a lot of recipes and make a lot of them. That way, you can see how they turn out and what we think of them. And these four ground beef recipes surely did stand out. They are amazing and quick and simple because you know that's the way I like to make them. And if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to push that button down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. Let's get to making some of those ground beef recipes. It's time for me to put this ponytail up and get to cooking. And let's make an easy supper recipe. TikTok spaghetti. Real easy, real simple. You'll need some tomatoes. I like the little cherry tomatoes. You'll need a block of cream cheese. A pound of hamburger, which I'm going to brown and drain. Some olive oil, garlic salt, Italian seasoning, and of course spaghetti. And I've got our microwave spaghetti maker, whatever it's called. But I'm going to do that, the noodle maker. And then I've got these garlic toast that were in the freezer. You know, because I got them on sale, bought two of them, put them in the freezer. And now I'm going to take them out. I'm defrosting them as we speak. And then they will be for this supper tonight. So let's go ahead and get everything in my cast iron skillet to put in the oven. First thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan just to make sure it doesn't stick. And I am using the good robust olive oil. Danny's favorite stuff. That's why it's so yellow. Now I've got that in the pan. I'm going to go ahead and put in the whole block of cream cheese. And yes, I know on the TikTok version it uses like feta or something like that. We don't like feta cheese, so I'm using cream cheese. It works tremendously well. And I love to cut the tomatoes in half, and I have figured out that the easiest way to do it is basically to put your scissors in the middle and then cut, and you don't have all the squirting and stuff going on that happens whenever you try to cut a tomato. It does take a little bit longer this way. I know that there's one thing where you can cut through a bunch of tomatoes at a time, but honey, they squirt everywhere. And this is just... To me, the best way to do it so you don't mess your whole kitchen up and have to clean up everything. Now I have got all of the tomatoes cut up. I'm gonna put a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil on here, which is not the very flavorful kind. I'm also gonna put some Italian seasoning on this. And a little bit of garlic salt. Now. If you want to go ahead and use some spaghetti sauce with this, you can once you get it out of the oven. And it just depends on how much sauce this makes. Because we're going to need a meal, and we'll see how much these two packs of tomatoes taste, uh, make. I do need some onion in here. I'm just going to put some onion in here. Um, I don't know how much, just how much ever your family likes. I know some people don't like onion. Don't put it in. We just like onion, and it makes it taste so much better. And I need some garlic, which I am not sure exactly how much I'm putting in. I'm just using up the remnants of what was left in this jar, and that's what's going to be in here. Now to finish it off, I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I am going to cover this with its lid and put it in the oven for about 20 minutes, and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out the pasta pasta going on. See this right here, this is one serving and this is two. So I want to put in enough for two in that serving to where it fills that hole. That way you know you've got exactly the right amount of pasta, which there you go. Perfect. And now this will go into the pasta pasta. I put the pasta in. I filled the water below the four line. That way there's no boil over. This will go in the microwave for 12 to 14 minutes and then we'll let it sit while the rest of this gets cooked. And after about 15 minutes, this is what it looks like. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is mush all the tomatoes and the cream cheese and everything together. You can use an immersion blender if you want to, it doesn't matter. It's pretty easy to mush it all together. 
I probably want to transfer over possibly to a, tom a potato masher than this. So let me do that. Now I think this would be a better, a better thing. It mashes the tomatoes. You could, like I said, you could use an immersion blender if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I am going to add a little bit of tra traditional tomato sauce to this. You don't have to, but I like to bulk it up just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just because I love the flavor of that. And I'm going to go ahead and stir that in. Look at that. Look, I mean, those tomatoes have gotten down to absolutely just about nothing now that I mashed them. And that little bit of flavor is all you need. You can add more tomato sauce if you need to. You make it the way you want to make it. But this is the way it looks. It looks amazing. Let's get the spaghetti into the sauce. This is what the pasta looks like out of the Rasta pasta. I mean the Fasta pasta that is. Uh, container. It looks amazing. And I'm going to go ahead and empty it into the pan. And I'm going to go ahead and get it all mixed up in all of this wonderful sauce. Now I've got the noodles all mixed in. The next thing to mix in is the hamburger meat, which has been browned and drained. I'm going to go ahead and mix that in. We already have onions and all the good stuff in the pan. So all we've got to do is get this in the mix with everything else. Now that is a good looking spaghetti plate. Let me go ahead and get this plated up. Okay, and here you go. I'm going to add a little bit of Parmesan on the top. Not much. Danny's not a big Parmesan fan. And TikTok spaghetti and garlic toast. And it's what's for supper tonight. And tonight we're going to be making some Mexican tater tot casserole. I have been debating on putting Rotel in this recipe, and I've decided I'm not going to since I've already changed one thing. Because y'all know how I like to change it up. What we're going to need is some Mexican cheese, some taco seasoning, some onion, green chili chicken, excuse me, green chili enchilada sauce. Y'all know what I'm thinking about. Some green chilies themselves, some kidney beans that are rinsed and drained, some corn that is rinsed, and some tater tots. And I am going to go ahead and put the tater tots in the oven to let them get firm. Y'all know if y'all have ever watched my tater tot casserole, I like to get a little crisp on these before I mix it with everything else. That's just the way I like it. And of course, the star of the show, the hamburger. I'm about to brown up, drain, and then start adding everything to. So let's come back whenever the tater tots get done and the hamburger gets browned and we'll get everything put together. Oh, and I've started the oven on 375. So let's get cooking. And I've got the hamburger browned and drained. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of the other ingredients. It says one medium onion chopped, about a fourth of a cup. Well, you know me, I'm a Vidalia onion lover. So we're gonna add a good little bit of onion here. If you don't like onion, don't add it. But for me, yep, Vidalia onion is the only way to go. It does call for some black beans, and it does call for some corn. Next, I'm going to add in the green chilies. That's good. Okay. And the taco seasoning. That's probably more than I needed. But that's okay. Oh, it looks pretty good now. There we go. Now, it says in the instructions to go ahead and add the whole can of green chili enchilada sauce. I'm not, and I'll show you why. I'm going to add about a fourth of it. Oh, that's about good. You don't need a whole can. You're gonna put it in a little later. I'll show you where I'm gonna put it. Okay. Now I believe that's got all the ingredients that we need in the pan and it's time to put it in our dish. And I'm actually going to go ahead and let this cook just a minute or two till the, I got red beans instead of black beans. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> Thought I got black beans until the beans get a little bit doneer. So let's go ahead and let that cook up just a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the bean and beef mixture in the cooking dish. Look at that. Ooh, that looks pretty good. All 
right. Let me go ahead and spread it out because I'm going to put the taters on the top. And no, I did not use a nine by thirteen. Y'all know I don't. We don't need that much food. I've kind of consolidated it into an eight by eight. Now the next phase is to put the tater tots on, and I have let them get a little bit brown because you know that's what I like. And I'm gonna just layer them on. All right, now I've got all of them laid out. Y'all know me. I like to have them in rows. And I'm going to pour the rest of the green chili chicken in green chili and gelato sauce on top of it. Just because I think it needs something on top of the tater tots that will ooze down into all the meat below instead of putting all the nice stuff on the bottom. And I'm sure this is probably going to run all over the place, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put some cheese on the top. Now put it on a pan, that way if it boils over, which it's probably going to because I'm trying to condense a big meal into a small container, then at least it'll be contained. And I'll put this in the oven for 30 minutes and let that cheese melt up real pretty. And then we'll see what we've got when we come back. And 30 minutes later, this is what it looks like. Look at that. Let's dish some out and put a little cheese on it and call it amazing. And here we go. I put a little bit of cheese on it. I'm going to put a little bit of sour cream in the middle. Y'all know I don't do that great in sour cream. But that's it. Mexican tater tot casserole. And it's what's for supper tonight. And tonight I'm going to make a Big Mac taco. Really quick, really simple. All you need, a taco shell. I've got some hamburger pickles. I've got some onion that I'm going to be putting on this. I cheated and got the secret sauce. You can make your own Big Mac sauce. I'll have that link down below if you want to make your own. I've got some cheese and some hamburger meat. Let's get to making some Big Mac tacos. First part of this is just to get some meat on it. And I'm going to mush it down. Doesn't call for a lot of meat because of these little bitty taco shells, whatever they call street tacos, are tiny. And that's what we want is little bitty ones because you don't want huge ones. And I am just going to get a good little ball of meat and pop it around where it almost goes to the ends. And Danny's going to have three. I may wind up having to make him four because knowing him, he's a hungry man. Now once they're nice and flattened like that, it's time to put them on, excuse me, in the pan. I've got this uh, pan on a medium. Can you hear that? Can you hear it? Oh, it sounds so good. If I could, I might could get all three in here. Now it's going to be close. Let that cook for just a little bit and then I'll flip it over to the back and then we'll be ready to plate us up some tacos. But it doesn't take but a few minutes and it smells so good. I did not do anything on this. Um, I should have added some salt and pepper, but didn't think about it. But it won't take long for that to get done. And I've just let them cook for maybe five minutes. And look at this. The hamburgers are already done. You don't want to overcook the hamburger. You just flip it over. And let the back get a little bit warmed up. Get this shell nice and warm. Leave it on for about a minute or two. Now I'm going to add some salt and pepper on it. All right. We'll let this cook for about a minute or so, and then it'll be time to assemble the tacos. Now I've noticed that the actual shells are bubbling around the hamburger meat, so it's time to take it off. Now while the hamburgers are still hot, I'm going to go ahead and put the cheese on. This is American. I'm going to put some pickles on. About two. I don't think I need more than two. Because I'm going to fold them over here in a minute. And make them into a taco. A little bit of onion. A couple onions on each one. Some of the secret sauce. Like I said, I've got the uh, Big Mac sauce I'll put down below. All I'm going to do is fold it and pop it in there. Look at this. 
and here is Big Mac Tacos. And it's what's for supper tonight. And we're going to be making some quesadilla taco pizzas. Or the best I can. I've got the hamburger browning up over here. I've got some onion ready to put on it. Taco, taco sauce right here. Some green, some red, some Mexican blend. And Danny's having a fit. And some taco seasoning. So, and of course, here's the tortillas. So, let me get this taco meat cooked up. And then we'll put everything together. It won't take long. And I've got this hamburger meat already browned up and drained. I'm going to go ahead and add in some taco seasoning and a little bit of water. Just enough to get the taco seasonings into the hamburger meat. I'm going to go ahead and let this simmer for just a little bit so all this will meld together. And then we'll get to making the quesadillas. Now for the base of the pizza, we are going to use a quesadilla. We're going to make it a quesadilla. We're going to heat this bad boy up and put some cheese inside of it. And of course I've got my Mexican cheese. I'm going to scatter out. And then put the other shell on top. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on this and leave it on kind of a medium, medium low, just so this can warm up enough to melt the cheese. We aren't trying to brown it per se, we just want it to melt it. And then once it's melted up, we'll put the hamburger meat and all the other stuff on. And I went ahead and tried to raise it up and look, it's already melting, that's what we want. Now it's time to put the hamburger meat on top. You don't need a ton on top of it, but just enough to give it that taco -y flavor. Now I'm going to add a little bit of onion to the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of taco sauce on top. A little bit of green. And a little bit of red. And a little more cheese. Now I'm going to put the lid back on for just a minute or two and let that little bit of cheese melt and then we'll be ready to serve it up. And here you go. Hopefully it's going to slide right out of the pan. Nope, not really. There you go. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Like you would a pizza. Because I guarantee that's going to be good. Bam. A little bit of sour cream on top of it. All right. And there we go. Quesadilla taco pizza. It's what's for supper tonight. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, press that button down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. And let our family be a part of your family.